Hello, I'm Lord Jim School, and you're watching You Have Issues, a programme all about comics. To celebrate American Black History Month 2017, I'm going to tell you all about a supporting character of Superman who is not only a historically relevant black superhero, but is also in my top five of my favourite superheroes of all time. A strong, noble and heroic gentleman who sadly is often overlooked in the DC Universe these days. I am of course talking about Steel. No, not that one. Steel first appeared in Adventures of Superman issue 500 in 1993 as one of the imposter supermen during the Reign of the Supermen story arc. His origin story is rather heartwarming and a welcome change from the usual tragic backstory of most superheroes. Former weapons scientist John Henry Irons quit his job in disgust after weapons he designed fell into the wrong hands and killed several innocent people as a result. Ending up in construction, he saved a friend from falling from a skyscraper, but ended up plummeting towards the ground himself, until Superman saved him. Irons, overcome with gratitude, said he owed his life to Superman, to which he replied, then make it count for something. After Superman's death at the hands of Doomsday, Irons was buried under the rubble from the battle, and suddenly awoke insisting he helped Superman, unbeknownst to him that the battle had in fact finished weeks before, and that the Man of Tomorrow gave his life to save Metropolis. This prompted him to repay his debt to Superman by constructing a suit of powered armour to fight crime in Metropolis in the memory of their fallen champion. This heroic persona was dubbed the Man of Steel in reference to his armour. The character was created by writer Louise Simonson and artist John Bogdanovay. I mentioned earlier that Steel is historically relevant despite being created in 1993. This is because he was named after and inspired by the African-American folk hero John Henry, the Steel Driving Man. A man so strong he was said to have beaten a steam-powered hammer in a test of prowess. Oh, it's a lot better than it sounds. Go and Google it, it's a very good read. A standout feature of the character is that he shares Superman's heroic traits and his moral values. Because of this, in his introductory story, The Return of Superman, many people in Metropolis thought that he was Superman's spirit inhabiting a metal body. When confronted, he would always refute this and made it clear that he never claimed to be Superman, he's just fighting crime in his memory. It has been said by some fans that Steel is in fact DC's equivalent of Marvel's Iron Man. To me, these similarities are superficial at best, there are some noticeable differences. While both characters are scientific geniuses and have powered suits of armour that enable flight and enhance strength, the similarities end there. John Henry Irons does not have anywhere near the amount of wealth and influence in the superhero community that Tony Stark has. Not to mention that while Steel's armour does have onboard smart technology, it does not match the capabilities that Stark's has, especially his repulsor technology. However, later versions of Steel's hammer does have impressive technological capabilities such as an onboard guidance system, enabling him to throw the hammer with increased accuracy. It goes without saying, but they are both awesome characters in their own way. Steel was given his own ongoing series in 1994, and lasted 52 issues before it ended in 1998. The first few issues chronicled Steele's return to his hometown of Washington DC after Superman's resurrection, and focused initially on his mission to rid the streets of the military-grade weapons that he helped create. But then he went back to Metropolis to assist Superman during the World's Collide crossover, where DC's milestone imprint was integrated into the DC Universe. He also played an important role in the year-long weekly series 52 opposing Lex Luthor's Everyman project, which aims to grant superhuman powers to ordinary civilians through a formula that has been developed by Lex Corp. During this series, Irons is unknowingly injected with this formula by Lex Luthor and transforms into a literal Man of Steel, and is determined to uncover the real motive behind the Everyman project. Regardless of Steel's involvement, it's still an amazing story. Go check it out, it's really good. Steel has even been a member of the JLA, and after 52 went on to lead a team comprised of the survivors of the Everyman Project, known as Infinity Inc., which included his niece Natasha Irons, and was the modern incarnation of the Legacy team. He's also showed up in the New 52 as a backup feature in Action Comics, which is something I wanted to happen for a long time. His character is similar in some aspects, but his origin and motive had very little to do with Superman on a personal level compared to his previous origin. He's still a weapon scientist, but he quits in disgust upon seeing Lex Luthor torturing Superman, but then he suits up to help Superman stop John Corbin from using a suit he built. You see, this could have been awesome, but just like the New 52 in general, it had little purpose and lacked any kind of excitement, just like your mum in the sack. Steel also had his own film in 1997, with Shaq O'Neal playing the title character. This was originally meant to be a spin-off from the then-planned Superman Lives, but as it didn't get made, they just decided to push on with it regardless. <laughs> it went about as well as you'd expect. 
piss poor acting, lame action scenes, and an incredibly unconvincing steel costume made out of rubber. To redeem the character on screen, he should at the very least be given a role in a DC movie as, say, a former LexCorp or a Star Labs employee. And that is Steel. Thank you very much for watching this episode of You Have Issues. I'm Lord Jimsical. Time for a bit of feedback. Tell me what you thought of this episode and what you would like to see more of. Let me know in the comments, on my Facebook page, or on Twitter. Last but not least, Black Lives Matter. 